Hi, welcome to worship today. Today we're learning about St. Benedict and how he led us and leads us to think about God's role in our life, about how he teaches us to live with God at the center of what we do. St. Benedict is the one responsible for the rule of St. Benedict, which is a rule book for how to live life in a monastic community. One of the things Benedict is known for is the way the rule starts, which says, listen and incline the ear of your heart. He invites us into a practice of listening to the Holy Word, listening to the scripture break forth. So I want to start our practice today by listening to the Holy Word. So I invite you to listen as you hear the words of the scripture passage today, read twice. As you listen to those words, and they will be um, visual so you can read them also if that helps. As you hear those words, let them sink in. And I want you, as you let those words sink in, watch for the word in the passage that sticks. Meaning if you're reading them on the screen, it's going to sparkle or shine or stand out. If you've closed your eyes and are just listening to the word, it's the word that you can't let go of. It's like it's got a piece of gum attached to you. And as you try to step away, that word will be with you. So I invite you to settle in, to breathe in and breathe out, to breathe in and center your heart on God. Breathe in and breathe out and listen for a word from the Lord. Then suddenly, a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. Then suddenly a woman, who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years, came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well, and instantly the woman was made well. So I hope you have a word. If you don't, pick your favorite phrase from the passage. And I want you to spend a moment with me and just breathe that word or that phrase. Let it roll around in your heart and in your mind. And ask God to share with you what that word means.
Thank you for taking that moment of silence with me. I know sometimes that is the hardest thing to settle your mind. And sometimes you don't get anything because you're too worried about the sound, like I could hear the sound of the clock ticking. So it reminded me to think, to stop, to listen. So I want you to hear the passage of scripture one more time. Then suddenly, a woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak, for she said to herself, if I only touch this cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly, the woman was made well. I want you to again close your eyes and breathe deeply. And this time in our silence, I want you to place your story, the picture that came to your head, the word, whatever it was that came up in our previous silence, I want you to give it into God's care. Trusting God to transform your life, opening yourself to divine guidance, in deepening your spiritual life. I invite you to give that story, that picture, that word, that worry into God's care. As we pray together the prayer that your son taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Open my ears that I may hear. Voices of truth thou sendest clear, and while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. That hymn by Clara Scott goes really well with our theme today, following the life and practice of St. Benedict. Because St. Benedict begins his rule for the monasteries with the words, listen carefully, my son, to the master's instructions and attend to them with the ear of your heart. Attend to them with the ear of your heart. So that's why we began worship this morning with a shortened version of Lexio Divina. And I invite you, if it didn't seem right or it didn't feel long enough, to go back, pause the video in the silence after you hear the word, and rest there until you do receive an image, a song, a story, something that 
connects you with that scripture and then with God. And then you can push go again. Because what St. Benedict wants to teach us is that the written word can open up God's presence among and with us in our lives. That it isn't just that this story or any word of scripture was written long ago for a particular people, but this word today, even in the most unlikely passage, can you give you a word that will speak to your heart? It can give you a way to see the world differently. That's why he asks us to listen and attend with the ear of our heart, to practice holy reading. As I was thinking about that today, practicing holy reading, I wondered if that's the practice we need to adopt for Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Instead of jumping right into what the words are saying to the next laugh, to the next political message, to the next story. What if, before you jumped into that story, you asked for your ears to be open, the ears of your heart to be open, so that you can hear the voices of truth, so that you can hear God speaking through the story, How would that change how you interacted with what you were reading? How would that change the news stories we read in the morning or the jokes or the, the memes? Would it make us think differently about what we want to scroll through in our life? Would it point out to us something that we hadn't seen before? Can you imagine doing that today? As you open your Facebook feed or your Twitter roll, and you say, open the ears of my heart. Open my ears that I may hear your truth. Open my mind that I may read more of your love can you imagine that? If in our Twitter feeds and our Facebook follow, what we were looking for were signs and images of God's love. Because we often think about these saints and our scriptures as separate from our ordinary life. And the thing about St. Benedict and what he wanted to teach us and what he wanted to teach the monks that were under his care was that God isn't something that you just do at certain times, either of the day or the week. It isn't something that you just do when you step into the sanctuary. That being present with God and listening for God is something we do all the time. We do in every task we take. So that's why Benedict believed that the monks should have a practice of daily prayer. And he set up a practice that they would pray throughout the day. Every three hours approximately. They would stop what they were doing and pray. They would sing a song. They would read a song. Every three hours they would stop and pray. That prayer be became part of their everyday life. That prayer surrounded. times, whether using the sound of the phone, whether using, in a case of Hinckley, when the train rolls by, to stop for a moment and invite God to open your eyes, to open your ears, 
to open your mind, to open your mouth, to stop and pray. And then to end it with the Lord's Prayer, that communal prayer that invites us to take ourselves out of ourselves and into the world and invites us into the place where all other Christians are saying that prayer together, believing that God's kingdom can come and will come and will be part of this world and is part of this world and our place within that kingdom. We pray throughout the day. And it wasn't just that they had those designated times when they stopped and prayed. But it was also that they, he invited everyone to see God at every task. So in order to make the monastery function, in order to make sure that everything got done, that everything was clean, that food was made, that people were in charge of leading the worship or the prayers, to make sure that the gardens were tended, the animals were fed. In every task, Benedict invited us to think about God's presence with presence within that task. That everything we did and how we did it would be an opportunity to, for God to enter our lives and to be with us. Would that change how you're feeling right now? And I know some of you have been itching and so you've jumped out into the world. Some of you without masks. You need to wear your mask and wash your hands. But Benedict's rule tells us that even if we're in our space, our home, doing our daily tasks, that God can be present there in those tasks. That we can invite God to be with us in those tasks. And that does that change how you wash the dishes, how you cook the food, what the food tastes like when you eat it. Does it change vacuuming the floor, mopping the kitchen, scrubbing the toilet? Does it change that task of picking the weeds, walking the dog? If our everyday tasks are seen as something that God is present in, does it change and transform those tasks for you? Does it make you more aware of how and why you're doing them? Does it center you and give you a sense of peace in the daily motions of your life? Would it change how you went about the jobs that you're doing for those of us who are working out of our homes, for those of us who have had to return to our jobs? Would inviting God into our lives, in our jobs, in the tasks that we do at our jobs, change those jobs? Will you give us a little more patience with that person who really wants to chat and we really don't want to spend a half hour with them? But maybe we're the voice of God for them that day. Maybe we're the ear and the heart of God that day. And if we invited God into our everyday tasks, would it calm us and center us? Would it open us to new experiences? Would it help us to see the work we do in a different way? And the final thing I want to talk about that Benedict invites us to do is to treat everyone as if they were so where does this idea come from? It comes from Matthew 25, the judgment of the nations passage, the parable of the judgment of the nations. So you remember that passage, right? And I'm only going to read part of it because there are two parts. I'm going to read the nice, kind part. 
Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you are that are blessed by the Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you? Or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family. You did it to me. Benedict invited his monks to see everyone they encountered as if that person could see Jesus right there in front of them. To see Jesus in everyone. And that's why most monasteries, if not all monasteries, to this day, welcome people into their presence. Allow people into their grounds because they know that every person they encounter can provide them a glimpse of the holy, can provide them a glimpse of God, gives them a chance to be in the presence of Jesus. But it's the flip side also. Treat everyone as Christ. Means that you are to be Christ to everyone. You are to act to everyone as if you are embodying Jesus. How would that change the way you view the news right now? Would it change what you see and hear about what's going on in our world, about people who are rising up to challenge a system that has kept them oppressed and is in fact killing them right now with a disease that is attacking them because of the conditions of poverty we have placed them in. Would that change your understanding of what's going on if you, you, were to be Christ to everyone? That when you saw someone who was hungry, thirsty, someone who was naked, someone who was in prison, someone who was a stranger, and you acted as Christ. Meaning you saw that person, that one who is different from you, that one who you don't have a lot of interaction with in your ordinary life, that person that you don't know the name of. What if you saw them and you realized that your job in that moment was to be Christ to them? to be Christ to them. Would that change how you saw the world? Would that change how you acted in the world? Would that change what you did for the person in front of you and how you treated the person in front of you? Open my eyes that I can see. Open my ears that I can hear. Open my mind that I may read. Open my heart. Open my heart that the love I have can spill out to everyone. That the love we have can spill out because not only do we see Christ in everyone, but we are Christ to everyone. Amen.
invite you to give generously to the ministry of this congregation. For just today, we will be feeding people. Last month, when a girl mobile came, we fed 80 families. This month, I don't know how many will show up tonight. But in each and every one of them, it will be our job, those of us who are there, to see Christ in them and to be Christ for them. So I invite you to give generously to our ministry that we can continue to see Christ and be Christ. Let us pray. Oh God, open our hearts to the hurting world that you've given us. And may the gifts that we give to this church be used to show your love to the world in return. Amen. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will, that Jesus loves you and always will, that I love you and always will. And may you act on that love. May you see Christ in everyone you encounter. May you be Christ to everyone you encounter. Amen.